So we are going to be starting things off by running off a couple of matches on the winner side. We're going to be starting off with a couple with these two sets on stream: Invasion Nation versus Iceman and Green Ranger versus Traitorous Alf. So Invasion Nation's an interesting player to kind of start with because we've seen him like across a couple of DPOs, but he doesn't really stick with one particular character. I've seen him play Sim, I've seen him play Ed, I've seen him play Keef, I believe, on one occasion. I so, think um, I might have played against his Keef, actually. I could be mistaking him for someone else, though. And it's a possibility. Man, 3232. Three, two. People with numbers. Jesus. Yeah, he says he plays all three. Alright, so. The man with the kaleidoscope of characters. Not really so sure what to expect, but. Um, on the side of Iceman, we're potentially seeing a Balrog. Yes, so that is uh, main time. I guess you yes, would know. Yes, that's his main. Yeah, he's he's been he's been working with Balrog ever since. Uh, I mean, ever since I've seen him at um, Synthwave. So, and he's he's uh, he's on point with the Zanniers. The Zanniers are. I mean, Balrog has a pretty good Zannier to begin with. Um, yeah. So he's he's got pretty good reactions and. Um, so on and so forth. Knows some pressure. Watches a lot of Brian up. So, <laughs> uh, but we'll we'll see what he uh, what he has in store for Invasion Asian. Well, hopefully, this will be a good match. Then I know Geef looks like Invasion Asian picked Geef. I know Geef has traditionally been a really bad matchup for Balrog, but I think that yeah. Beast Hill Two is like flipped the matchup in a complete 180 from Balrog. Oh yeah. Because the whole okay, issue before was her. that whenever a Balrog would do a dash punch, he would just be minus in Geef's face. But with the V-Skill 2 dash punch, now he's plus in Geef's face, so he doesn't have to take that mix-up for doing a dash punch. Right. Okay. Plus, yep, back dash. Uh, no dash back in and for the punish. Just walked right up and grabbed. Nice. Yep. <laughs> oh, okay. Ooh. Yeah, you gotta go low when uh, you see Geef do a stand heavy punch. Good anti air. Okay, plus back dash. It's, Ooh, okay, good invasion, check on that. Invasion Asian keeps trying to press a button after blocking a V skill two dash punch. I'm not sure he realizes it's plus on block. Probably not. It's probably his first time experiencing it. Man, the SPD range is super scary when it comes to beef. Good lariat on the reaction. Okay. Yep. Oh, that, that, was a, that was a good vacuum. I could be wrong, but I think that vacuum was actually minus, and Iceman could have taken his turn back. Right, um, right. Looks like he was a little slow there, where he thought Geep was plus. Okay. Oh, got a clean jump in, but no conversion. And the dash up SVD right. from Invasion, Geep classic. Straight. Didn't quite confirm on that uh, standing heavy kick. He's trying to he's trying to go in for a straight, and he's catching him in the startup frames. Oops, ah, yeah. He walked right back into it after he dashed out. And we have invasion Asian with V trigger and super active. Oh, and that <laughs> oh, that's gonna be it. That's Got him gonna with take it. Yep. Take him with the first round. I mean, he only used that once, and that was for the kill. That's actually a, yeah. that's actually a really good idea to save that move for like towards the end because that's when your opponent's gonna least expect it. So, especially it's that. It's good in that sense. I still recommend not using it that often though because it's still a risk. Most, at least higher level players, train themselves to react to it on uh, visual and audio cue. Right. Um, so you really have to overwhelm the, their mental stack for it to work. Okay. He's got a... So I noticed that Invasion Asian is in... Um, a 
Okay, good neutral jump. That's what I was about to. That's what I was about to point out is that he's not a. Uh, is that uh, Iceman wasn't neutral jumping any of uh, the uh, yeah. man grabs that he was uh, telegraphing. So it seems like he's picking up now. Okay, trying to go for the EX sweep. All right catch with the sand and heavy punch well e even if you know if man grab is coming you don't necessarily want to jump even if you have like 80 percent uh read that it's going that the jump would be viable right because if one if you're wrong you eat it but two if you take it and you you're tell telling the geef player that hey i'm gonna take the throw so in a more clutch situation when you need to avoid the throw you can jump out it, taking damage is not the end of the world in this game. It's okay to take a little bit. The only hit that matters is the one that's gonna kill you. Fair enough. I mean, <laughs> see, I in my in my mindset, I'm just worried about that because I don't want Geep to get like the Oki pressure and so on and so forth. Especially if he does like a heavy or EX SPD. But if you show the Geef that you're going to try and avoid the throw, uh -huh. then over the long term, you're going to end up putting yourself in more mix-ups. Like, it, it, it becomes a situation where you're both guessing instead of just one person guessing. If you say you're just, if you tell yourself you're just going to take that command throw, now obviously there's exceptions to this, like when it's a EX um, SVD or something like that where he gets a lot of advantage. Um, I'm going on tangent here and I forgot what I was going to say, but basically what I'm trying to communicate is that, that if you sit there and you tell the grappler that you're going to take the throw, mm -hmm. you're going to be more in control of those situations than if you were going to panic and try and 50-50 whether it's going to be a button or a throw. Gotcha. And that's more valuable in the long term because you can sort of help direct how the defense is going to work. Okay, all right. Yeah, I never never really thought of it that way. Because if, if I, if I as a grappler, if I throw a dude two times in a row and he's just standing there, mm. and th this might vary from player to player, but in my head, I'm thinking, okay, he's going to probably sit there. So the more times it works, the more times the correct option to leave that situation will work. So if you condition me to always go for the grab, that means you are going to be able to get a free jump away and a free punish. Okay. Yeah, it's just so you're just saying just it's it's the opposite of well, I shouldn't say the opposite, but on it, the, on it's on the, the conditioning works. Yeah, it's ways. conditioning. Yeah. See, when I'm doing that, if I get like two SPDs and like I'm not, I try to. Depending on, like, how I see my opponent, like, reacting to it, like, majority of the time, I'm not going to go for the third one. Well, like I said, I mean, that depends. Like, you also have to try and figure out who your opponent is and how they, the tempo of their adapting. You know, it's different for everyone, but... Okay. 